One of the men that I have grown to admire over the past few years is one of the leaders in ophthalmology, ophthalmic surgery, a writer, researcher, a man who is known for his surgery, but also known for his great skill in music. Ken Rosenthal is, to me, one of the most amazing people in ophthalmology because he has as great a skill in the operating room as he does on the piano, and I want you to hear him on the piano. Ken Rosenthal. Good afternoon, everyone. I'd like to share with you something very special to me today, and that is my love of the piano. Uh, and I want to thank Spence because he's been a great friend and mentor and someone I admire very much, and I'm delighted to be able to present at this session. So here's the story. I was born on October 1st, 1953, and this gentleman on the lower right was born on October 1st, 1903. He's none other than the great Vladimir Horowitz, Perhaps one of the greatest pianists, perhaps the greatest pianist of all time. My parents mistakenly took this as some sort of sign that I was born on his 50th birthday, but it really didn't rub off. What did rub off was a love of music. Uh, I started at an early age. I studied with a gentleman by the name of Avraham Sternklar, who was a graduate of Juilliard, and I also spent some time at Juilliard in my uh, young adulthood. Uh, he uh, is the only teacher that I've ever had. I've studied with him since I was seven years old, and I continue to study with him to this very day. Um, he warned me that in presenting today, that because I'm making a recording rather than playing for you live, and we'll see why in a moment, he warned me that very much the way we're perfectionists in the operating room, never quite satisfied with what we do, because we want, always want it to be better, that the most daunting thing is to make a recording of oneself and play it in public, and he was right. It's actually easier to perform live. Um, you start to go back and listen to it yourself. But I hope you'll enjoy it anyway. Um, he continues anyway to be my friend, uh, my musical coach, and he's also a patient of mine. Um, music is a wonderful form of relaxation. It's a wonderful emotional outlet. Um, and it's a great adjunct to surgical skills. The ability to perform uh, multiple tasks at once. You think of Two foot pedals, uh, two hands doing bimanual fake emulsification, and then think of a Bach three part invention, and the former pales by comparison. So it's taught me a lot of physical and mental dexterity, and it's cheaper and more satisfying than psychotherapy. <laughs> I want to spend most of the time actually having you listen to some music because this is the crux of the matter. Um, I'm going to present to you two contrasting pieces, both are com com compositions which, interestingly, the coders themselves really didn't like. In fact, um, uh, as we will see, one of them actually never heard it is performed. The first is played alone by Claude Debussy. It's from a suite of piano piece, soul piano pieces called Suite Pergamosk, and it's probably the best known impressionistic piece of music. Uh, it was named after Paul Verlaine's poem, Claire de Lune. Secondly is the Fantasy Impromptu, uh, which was written by Frederick Chopin at an early age. And um, the, this music has been performed by everyone. It's been performed by Horowitz, who we mentioned earlier, um, by Liberace, and it's been popularized as a popular song in the Tin Pan Alley days as I'm Always Chasing Rainbows. Um, Chopin never heard this performed. It was actually published after his death at the insistence of his friend who got permission from the family. Chopin had actually asked for all of his unpublished works to be, and uncomplete works to be destroyed. And fortunately for all of us, uh, someone else prevailed. Let me tell you quickly about the piano, and then we're going to go to some actual um, performance. Uh, I had the opportunity to uh, borrow this piano from the Bosendorfer dealer here in Las Vegas. Bosendorfer is perhaps uh, the Rolls Royce of pianos. And this piano that you're looking at is the only one of its kind in the world. In 1869, Emperor Franz Joseph of Austria presented a gift to the Emperor of Japan as a gift of friendship uh, after a, they had made a treaty. It was lost in the files, fire several years later and it was never rebuilt. There was never another one made until 2003 when a, this replica was made. On top of which, this is a special piano by itself. This classic piano is made only by Bosendorfer. It has 97 keys, and if you listen carefully, even in the recording, you will hear this wonderful, rich bass, clear as a bell. And you'll hear wonderful overtones because
because even if you don't play those keys, those strings are on the piano and they resonate, they build a, a rich sound, which I hope will come through in this room. You see a, uh, an extra set of notes. This actually has seven, uh, I'm sorry, eight full octaves. Uh, and this piano was lent to me uh, free of charge by the Bösendorfer dealer here, and, and I owe him a debt of gratitude. I hope you'll enjoy it. it